Joining us today at Interactive Investor is Clem Chambers, who's the Chief Executive of Online Blockchain PLC, listed on the alternative investment market. Hi, Clem. Hi, Gary. How are you doing? I'm very good. Um, could we begin with the company? How are you trading at the moment? As you could imagine, with the blockchain as it is up until about three days ago, not brilliantly, because our share price did very, very well, because we're one of the few blockchain crypto uh, businesses actually listed on the A market. Now, obviously, the bottom fell out of crypto. It was at 20,000, and we went down pretty much in line with what Bitcoin has done. So, as of about three days ago, we were <coughs> we have performed exactly like Bitcoin. Well, things are looking up, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I gather you have a new product out uh, to do with mining. Well, wow. two new products which are in test. And, and they're going very well. But the one which I suppose is the one that people will be talking about, the one that is generating a lot of interest, yeah. is, is a site, or it's, we call it a site, anyway, it's more than that, called Freeloader. Yes. And that enables you, via the mechanism of the blockchain, via the mechanism of crypto, to get free commercial games by using your GPU. <clears throat> so, imagine you're well, you're me, actually. I've got a 1070, which is not a very powerful graphic processor, mm. in my notebook computer. It's an NVIDIA processor. NVIDIA, um, that's right. Yeah. And I can download the freeloader software, mm. and it says, would you like a game? And I say, yes. And he says, which game would you like? Any game, you name it, via Steam or via the Origin system. So we're talking about a whole universe of games. I say, oh, I want Tomb Raider. And it says, OK, press this button. I press the button. It says, right, it's going to take you 17 days. And then it's yours. Or in case of one nice kind of Tetrisy game, about a day. And then it says, it counts up points. It says, you've got enough points now. Do you want it? And I go, yes, please. And then I download it via Steam. Bang, I've got the game. Yeah. So I haven't had to pay a penny. It's a 10 buck game. I got it in a day and a half on my funny little GPU, which is nowhere near state of the art. Yeah. But because what my computer is doing is mining crypto using our technology to optimize how much money you can make with your computer, we then say, right, well, you've made enough to buy that game. And then we buy it for you, give you the unlock key, bang, you've got the game. And that can be something that you've never heard of, a little game. It can be Aircraft Tycoon. I bought Civilization, the latest Civilization with it. Um, and I'm currently mining away to get Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Because <laughs> I like Lara. Okay. I was around when okay. it first came out, and um, I can get it for so free. This sounds like a very consumer-friendly approach to getting people into mining. Well, we and in fact, you don't need to have any particular well, um, knowledge in order to actually use the well, it's, tool. It's not mining. That's like saying that a computer is a CPU and selling an Xbox because it's got chips in it. Yeah. Right? It's a platform to get free commercial games if you've got a computer of a certain type. Yeah. Now, yes, the magic below it is, is crypto mining. But no one needs to yeah, know that yeah. or care about it. We explain it all in great details, but it's very boring, right? If you're a kid, you've only got so much pocket money, but if you've got a, a GPU, you can press the button and you can earn that game. If you've got a decent kit, probably you can get the best game in a few days, right? If you are, um, well, anybody that wants to, because I mean, a lot of people never switch their computer off, right? It is running. You just run this software and you get these games Yes, you're mining. Yes, you're generating crypto. Yes, we make a nice fat profit from doing that. But we enable normal people in the street not to have to have a wallet, not to have to know what Bitcoin is, yeah. not to have to know what a blockchain is, not have to know what difficulty is, not have to know what hardware they've got to be able to go one button. I want Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I want um, Call of Duty. I want um, actually some keys to what's that game where they all go around and kick Fortnite. You can, you can actually do that on the system. I will get a, a week of, of, of The Sims 5, an add-on pack to the latest flight sim. Because whatever you can get on Steam, which anybody that knows these things will know that's pretty much everything, you can get via using your hardware to mine, if you should care that's what you're doing, to actually get those unlock keys and get those games for free. Okay, so... Um, and it's a first. How does, how does that... Uh, revenue stream work? Do so people well, pay for the software or you take a cut? We just act as a retailer and we take the sort of cut a retailer gets. So we have an infinitely, infinite size shop um, and we have a, a nice profit margin and the client gets something for next to nothing.
Um, and all those people that are set in the computer game business al alight, we plug straight into that. Yep. And when's the launch date, roughly, if you're able to? Well, if you were in the queue for the closed beta, and anybody can go to the freeloader site okay. and just put in their email address, and okay. we're letting people in batches, because you can imagine the demand for this sort of product. Yep. So we can't let everybody in to start off with, because we've, I think we've been running for about three weeks in the background, and it's like, it's wonderful. We're in test, but we're making money from that. But we're letting people in in batches, because we want to scale it. We don't want to um, you know, have a big upset. The early days that we're running in now, we have our nice focus group of people there, and, and we are kind of attracting the, the hardcore element in. But, you know, it's like when Spotify opened, they did the same thing. We had to get an invite. Yeah. And I suppose we're in the cusp of, of opening it up more, but we're just letting in tranches of people in, into the site. Okay. It's a soft launch, that's what they call it in a the interwebs. We're good. soft yes. launching it, yeah, it's going very, very tech. well. Yeah. Um, and you can go and, 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 and yeah, people are, are using it right now. And I've actually got and played two games from my um, notebook 1070 already during this process. Yeah. I noticed that the share price of uh, online blockchain is up today. Oh, is it now? Nearly 5% of what it's oh. worth. Maybe that's just a general market. They, they knew I was coming on your show. They knew we were coming on the show. Yes, that could be it. Um, okay, Bitcoin, which we just touched on. Why has it leapt in the past week? Well, nobody really knows, but I've just come back from Kiev. Okay, and it's, it's all down to me. Because if you think about it, what is Bitcoin for many people? It is gold, digital gold. Now, if you were, if you just lost an election, or were about to lose an election, or you were maybe some powerful people of the person that was not going to get elected, you might want to stash some of your money in Bitcoin, because you have to queue at the door to get out of Kiev Airport. Okay. <laughs> so you know, if you had some liquid, or maybe wanted to play it safe, you might do that. If you look at the Bitcoin um, uh, uh, phenomena back last year, and I bet. South Koreans thought they were going to get nuked. Mm. Well, what are you going to do? Run to the airport with a, with a briefcase of gold? You're not going to get much out of the country that way. Yeah, Much better to buy Bitcoin. And then you just go on holiday to America for a few weeks, don't you? Yeah. yeah? And if, yeah, if you come back and the buildings are still standing, you maybe you sell your Bitcoin. But that kind of thinking is what has driven Bitcoin and drives gold. Yeah. Right. So whatever you can think about what drives gold, you can apply to Bitcoin. Now, the other thing so is... You have something of an apocalypse. <coughs> thesis so called no it's a flight to safety it's okay. definitely a a fly asset and a, and a safety asset it's just like gold but it's better than gold because you can pack it in your silk suitcase in volume and in fact you don't even have to have it you can post your your password encrypted to, to a hotmail account and you can leg it can't you yeah. so it definitely has a you know that element that bitcoin is gold is a very very powerful thing now it's not the only story but it's one that people should always look to first if the market moves. What just hit the fan at that made Bitcoin go up? Well, day before Ukrainian elections, because the Ukrainians are big Bitcoin people, very, very into, into crypto. They have a very interesting election going on there. A television comedian is about to become president. Yes, I saw. Yeah. And a lot of, of, of business people with lots of business interests are about to be on the wrong side of the power divide very, very soon. So that is exactly the sort of thing that would drive a Bitcoin price. However, in addition to that, if you look at the chart and you believe that mumbo jumbo like I do, you can see that the, the actual uh, Bitcoin price has been going into a tighter and tighter range. Yeah. And it did that last time. And I was writing for Forbes. I said, look, when it breaks out from this range, it's going to go a long way in that direction. And it did. It went down and it went a long way in that direction. And it's repeated that cycle. So this time it broke up. And I said, don't worry about whether it's going to go down or up. Just when it breaks, you know, jump on it because it's going to go a long way. <clears throat> and this is going to go a long way, I think. This is going to go 6,000 pretty easily. Okay, so um, you don't hold any store by the April Fool's um, idea that there was a story that came out about um, the US Security yeah, and Exchange Commission it was approving an April Fool, um, and an the ETF. FT had an a uh, April Fool's as well. I miss the FT's yeah, one. The FT had right. one. I, I didn't actually read the article, but it said at last a use case for Bitcoin. Oh, like so, yeah, I have, seen, I have seen that. Yeah, FT yeah. Alpha, Alphaville, yeah. who uh, so, are famously um, haters of cryptocurrency, I think it would be fair to say. Yeah, well, uh, I, I won't be rude. I, it's very difficult for me not to be. It's very, very difficult for, for me not to be. But I've been there. I've been in the place where I thought it was silly. 
And then if you actually taste it, if you actually yeah. start to play with it, you go, you have a holy cow moment. Yeah, an epiphany, I think they used to call it back in the day. Um, a holy cow moment. And I had a holy cow moment. And once you've had the holy cow moment and you open your mind to the ramifications of crypto, there's no going back really. I mean, the thing about it is when I, after my holy cow moment, every time I touched it in any shape or form, I always make money. It's like a like some magic you know, goldfish that they have, you know. Every time so I touch the goldfish, it near the top, eighteen thousand. Yeah. Okay. But you know, I'm an old equity hand. I know I know that chart. I've seen it ever since I was a little yeah. child, so I know that that's run away. But I'm back in now to where I was when I got out eighteen thousand. Yeah. So I've now got my position back at at probably yeah around about this point, probably a little bit lower. Um, yeah, probably significantly lower actually. Yeah. But that isn't the point. The point is that what crypto does is it reverses the power dynamic. In our world, money goes uphill and trouble comes down. That's the pyramid of power, right? In crypto, it's the other way around. Trouble goes up, yeah, and money comes down. It's a reversal of the entropy, yeah, if that's not too abstract and kind of Californian for you. And because of the way that crypto works, opposite to the old school, that's what makes it so interesting and so powerful. Because, you know, if you go into equity markets, like a lot of people do, and they play with it, they end up poorer immediately. And however buttons and levels they push, or however many books they read, generally, it gives them bad advice, and they keep being poorer. And they keep going, what's this game? I don't like this game, I'm losing. Crypto, so far in my experience, is much easier to make money, it has been much easier to make money than equities. And I don't think it's because it's a ball bubble market. It's because the way that the whole system works is upside down from the top to bottom pyramid. It's a bottom to top pyramid. And that is what's so revolutionary about it. That's what's going to change everything. Okay, so um, I've had people in here previously who have told me that um, forget the anarchist stuff about disrupting finance and turning the money system upside down to benefit the many. Um, you still no, it's not. think that it's it's gonna, not. that's part it's of the story? 150 years ago, there were Republicans and monarchists, and they were in control. Who were the important people? They were the anarchists and the communists fighting, right? Today, they're the people in control, right? The libertarians, which are anarchists, the right wing, who are anarchists really down there, leave me alone, let me go on my life, and the socialists, which is, I will be a happy family and I'm your mummy, right? So they took over. So don't underestimate the anarchists, right? Because not only did they start the whole, whole fall of, of the old system of monarchy and Republicans back in 1914, uh, which was a 20-year process of, of revolution, right? They, they kicked off the demise of that old world. They can do it again, right? You've seen that in, in France, right? You don't think the guys with the orange jackets aren't anarchists, right? So don't underestimate the power of that. There's anarchic about that, yeah. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, there's definitely, well, they are anarchists. A lot of them are literally yeah. hardcore anarchist people. Don't underestimate the power of the idea of independent freedom and autonomy, right? Yeah. It, it has its limits on a spectrum of between no freedom and, and, and total control to no rules and total freedom. Somewhere in that spectrum is the right place, but you know, you can get too much of, of either, yeah. right? So what okay. I think you're seeing with crypto is a shift away from that swing towards totalitarianism that most people are seeing, right? Why do I bother vote when I can't get my Brexit? All that stuff, right? Is I, I, there's, there's too many rules. There's too much control, right? And in fact, because of that, there's actually not enough money, right? And this is, pushes it back the other way. How far it goes, of course, is, is another matter. It probably won't go too far because of you know, what we know as politics. But it is a reversal of, of the thermodynamics of money and power, okay. right? And that But as the, the system basic, uh, like, matures, do you think that the existing incumbents from the banks to the investment banks and the JP Morgans with their um, stable coins and the Facebooks of this world uh, uh, are going to shift that dynamic to yeah, a place just, where it's just shifts um, the balance. squeezes it's, out the little people. Yeah, it just shifts the balance. Look, um, I'm a numismaticist. Okay, I'm actually a professional numismaticist, strangely enough. Um, you and coins. I, I'm a financial advisor on coins to the biggest European fund in, in coins. Uh, I have been for over a decade. And the history of, of, of tokens is, a, is an interesting one. Mm. In the middle of the 17th century, there were private sector tokens, a lot of them, 
in fact, every pub had one, her own, because the government, in its wisdom of the time, couldn't be bothered to be messing about with small change. Yep. But it was needed in the financial system, and therefore the private sector created it. Hello world, that's a repeat. Now, after a certain amount of time, they went, hold on a minute, there must be money in it for us ruling classes. And they said, stop that, we're going to do it, and we're going to take the cut on that. So they stamped it out. But guess what they did next? They forgot to make any. So they ran out small change again within 150 years. And at the, around 1800, the same thing occurred again. There was not enough money, right? Physical money to do what was necessary for commerce. And I think what we're seeing today is the same. There's simply not enough M1, or is it M4, I can't remember, cash. Mm. There's simply not enough cash because you know the world um, loves cash and governments hate it. They have crucified the velocity of money. Right, which means if you crucify the velocity of money, you need more of it, mm. right? And because they've crucified the velocity of money, there's a there's a, there's a, like a pressure to create new money, and here we are. That's why crypto is here at all. Yeah, yeah I'm right. just wondering where QE fits in quantitative easing well, in terms of um, the, creating the more money. Increases the liquidity, but not the velocity. Yeah, yeah, and it also. So to explain, you're talking about how many times one coin goes around okay. inside, inside the I, I, I commerce will, system. I, I will so. keep it simple. Try opening a bank account. It will take you weeks. It used to take you a day, yeah. right? Try the KYC you have to go through, all the messing around they have to go to to move money these days, glues the whole system down, means that money flows slower. And if money flows slower, I can't spend it with you for you to spend it with him, for him to spend it with her, to her to spend it to me. So that money go round slows down, yeah. right? So to keep everything going, you need more money because it's moving slower, right? So if you don't produce more money, everyone's going, oh no, I can't send you the money. I can't, I can't get them to wire it to me. They say it's over the limit. They've got to fill out a form. Oh, there's a hurricane and the bank's not there. Oh, no, no. So it all slows down, right? But there's still a necessity and instinctive demand for commerce to, to, to happen. So for example, we take money from, um, from, from America and Europe for that matter, and they pay us in crypto because I can have it now. Now imagine your business or my business, it's got an advertiser, okay? There's a hurricane coming. And this is an actual example of where crypto increases the velocity of money and fulfills a currency purpose. A hurricane comes in, so the person who wants to advertise with us in two days time can't pay us. So we're going to lose that advertiser because the inventory would have used in two days' time is not going to get used. So that's, that's money lost for us, yeah, or inventory wasted. But we say, you can send us Bitcoin. He said, can he? Can he? Yeah. I said, well, I can't get, it, can't, can't get the bank to send it because they've evacuated my bank. There's a hurricane coming. Well, Bitcoin, literally, I think three minutes later, we knew the money was going to be with us because that's the way the blockchain works. Yeah. So we could set that going actually that moment. So it increased our velocity of business. So we could, I think we did actually set the advertising campaign going a day earlier because we got the money a day earlier. So we actually saved that inventory. We had more inventory to sell in the future. That made us more money. That's a perfect example of how Bitcoin fulfills a need for, for money because the velocity is so much higher. On top of that, if the guy paid us with a credit card, we, we trusted this guy, but if he'd been a random bloke, we would have gone, oh no, we've got to send a bank transfer because we don't want you reversing that credit card payment in six months and saying, no, it wasn't me, I didn't do it, someone stole my credit card, ha ha ha, right? And with a credit card, you can't guarantee you're ever going to get paid because you always risk it getting reversed out by somebody who scammed you. Bitcoin, they can't do it. They sent it, you got it. You know you've got it immediately and they can't take it back. But as the economists, I think, argued this week, that was uh, perhaps a weakness of Bitcoin well, actually, and actually, other crypto, actually the irreversible of it. Well, there so is if you do get um, scammed, how do you get your money back? If you do get robbed, well, how do you get your money back? Mm. I mean, I think that's an open question for all crime. Yeah, and that's what we've got a police force for. However, it's got to be said that there's no reason why there could not be a blockchain product or there could not be a, a, a change to Bitcoin at some time in the future where it could be reversible. That's just technology, yeah. right? So it doesn't change the fundamental um, way that crypto can work. It's just, it doesn't work like that at the moment. So that's about code being law. You can change the law by changing the code. Yeah. 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 What happens, now it's a question for you, what happens <coughs> if you've got a box with 10,000 pounds in it and it burns? 
You've lost your no, cash you or twenty thousand no, pounds in it. No, you take out the little silver bands, take it to the Bank of England, they replace that money. Oh, okay, really? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. So there's always a system that you can put in. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Clem. Next um, time you burn ten thousand pounds, you'll be thanking me. Yeah. <laughs> um, exchanges. There's been a little bit of talk about trading volumes on exchanges, and at the moment, apparently, the combined trading volume of the crypto sphere is it now at a higher level than it was at the top of the bull market when we nearly hit 20,000. How much of that trading volume is actually real? Um, it's a very good question. I think the answer is probably not as much as people would like. Um, yes, it's still the Wild West, but that isn't really how you should be looking at things. You shouldn't be looking at it short term, you should be looking at it long term. Long term, you've got to make the call is, does crypto go to zero or does it go to the moon, right? And I personally think it goes to the moon. And therefore, if you're a sensible person, all you do is take a small amount of your um, savable money, your investable money, a tiny amount, it can be like a percent, and slowly get it into crypto and just try to make the right call for the right coins. Now, most people will actually have their brains boiled at the whole concept of the way crypto works. So they've got to get onto the learning curve, which is long and steep. They've got to suffer that, and they don't have to punt money, large amounts of money out for that. They just do it gently with tiny amounts, learn it, and that will be a skill that will set them up for a long time. That's the way ahead. So don't sweat the short term. Make a long-term decision. And if crypto is going to be great, start learning, because the level of ignorance is incredible out there. And any skill that you build up will enable you to outperform all the people that haven't a clue and are, are, are thrashing around in it. But if you, if you make the call that it's, that it's gonna be the future, then you've got to skill up. That's the key thing. And you should do that just by playing with it for a year or so, just play with it. The fact it goes to 10,000 is not important because it could go to a quarter of a million in 10 years. And that's what you should be playing for, the long-term big picture. So skill up on it yeah. and, and, and go slow. Okay, and um, the market is perhaps maturing, or the industry is maturing, and you see uh, regulation as a key part of that maturity. Regulation would be great. Uh, regulation would be great. Um, I mean, I've got to say, when I was a kid, um, my father used to get the FT. And I look at the FT, and it'd be full of scandals. Scandal on every page, right? It's still like that. And uh, 50 years before that, it was still like that. And that's equities and business. Exodus and business are full of scandals and scams and shams and all that stuff. You know, the history of financial services is riven with it. I mean, you only have to look back to 2008. You have to look at banks, which are highly regulated, getting fined billions every other week for being less than straight. Let's just put it that way. So I think it's easy to miss the level of skullduggery in financial services, period. And it's easy to miss how much regulation there is as well, yet they're still going on. So I don't think regulation would be good because it makes it difficult for scammers yeah. to get over that hurdle. So it will and probably improve things. Will yeah. safer, but, the, but, but the other, other side of it is it's better if the investors don't go, oh, it's all regulated, it's safe, it's safe, I don't have to worry about that, it's safe, everybody's telling me the truth, yeah. oh, that's great. That is just a disastrous yeah, attitude, yeah, right? Sure. So regulators should be there as cops, busting bad people. They should be on the lookout for bad people and they should be busting them. They shouldn't be offering consumer protection. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. It's like, look, I'm, I'm worried about being robbed. Can the policeman walk around behind me? No, it shouldn't be like that. The regulators should be out there busting the crooks. Of, and you know they've they've got pretty much a large um, <laughs> market to go for in all financial services, and people should look at everything with an incredibly sceptical eye. Just moving on, how do you feel about uh, the fear of missing out and moving over to the institutional investors as opposed to the retail, which drove the market up last uh, time round? Um, do you go with that I idea? I think, think there's a problem the institutions have, which means that FOMO is not really an issue. It's a much bigger issue for them, and that's custody. Who's going to hold the coins? Because if there is a taller weakness in crypto, it is, it is like gold in that if someone breaks through your wall, they can walk off with it. 
right? And it's the walking off with your crypto that is really makes it difficult for institutions because who is the custodian? And who's been a custodian long enough to be able to be trusted? Because you know, it's, it's technology, right? And everybody knows it doesn't matter how many people swear, nothing can possibly go wrong. It can go wrong with technology. I've been, I've been reading about custody solutions for a number of years, like the Zappo, for example. Or, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. They've been around for a long time, supposedly providing custody services, well, and they have. The, I can't talk about them as individuals, but I believe they're expert at it until, until, until yeah. right? Yeah. You know, if you look at banks, the way that banks were in the past with their gold bullion, they built the biggest, amazing safes you can possibly imagine. And what you've got to understand about gold, gold's difficult to walk out with. You can only probably carry about a quarter of a million um, pounds in gold. You can walk, the biggest bank robbers of all time have been crypto. No one's ever gone into a bank and stolen $400 million. That's in $10 bills, that's 200, um, 400 million, 40 million grams. Well, that's thousands of tons, right, of $20 bills. But crypto, it's, it's as light as a feather. So you can't, it's very difficult to prove that you can't be robbed. Yes. Now, you can demonstrate you haven't been robbed, but it's even hard to demonstrate you haven't been robbed when you might have been, yeah? So it's a really, really difficult problem. Custody is a really, really difficult problem, and the way people at Coinbase do it, they won't tell you, right, because they'd be foolish to, because then they'd be opening themselves up to be robbed, right? So it's a very, very, very difficult problem, and if I am a institution, I wanna know how you can guarantee me that, my, that you won't get robbed because it's digital. So you could say, well, I've got an insurance policy. Show me someone's got an insurance policy that covers all of their crypto. Mm. I, but if you um, break it all out, mm. you break it all out so that you can only get robbed at gunpoint for a small amount. Yeah, yeah, and and it, it's, it's, I mean. But you've mentioned insurance, which is part of a solution. If um, I think Aon is doing it for um, yeah. Coinbase uh, through Lloyd's of London, yeah, but it's so hot. if they're doing the hot wallet, it's it's less risky to cover the cold storage. Would have Not really. thought. But no? why haven't they, but why haven't they got it covered for the cold storage then? Is it that is it that cold? I mean, yeah. you know, cold storage. What is that? It's a load. Of, and what happens if your guy with the passwords dies or or gets hit by a meteorite? Or catches you know, spontaneously catches Canada flow. And and well, whatever happened in India or didn't happen in India. And so. Exactly. So I mean, the 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 more you look into mm. it, the the more permutations that you've got for trouble. And if you just forget um, crypto for a minute, and you look back to gold bars, it's the same problem. Near enough, the same problem, right? And. You know, you get into Goldfinger, don't you? And you get into the guy that broke into the Bank of England and you get these huge safes that are now being turned into wine bars. You know, th they had a major problem and they mm. built bunkers and they parked tanks around their gold and they have armies there and they have all sorts of crazy stuff just to protect from theft gold bars. And crypto is, is in that way like gold too. So that is a definite issue with crypto and I don't think anyone's yet come up with a proper, but I, I must say I keep a lot of crypto at Coinbase because I, I have trust in their their security. And Yes, know, I read your little uh, uh, pamphlets on trading. And you mentioned it's a good idea to have little perhaps <laughs> three, um, three levels of um, exchanges. Yes, yes. One for the little bits, and little yes, coins, and yes. a middling one which you can kind the of security is to spread it rely around. on. And yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Coinbase you see as a sort of Rolls Royce of uh, Exchange yeah, world. Def definitely, definitely, yep. definitely. Yes, uh, future trends. What, what would you say are the things to look out for over the coming year or two? Um, is it staking and proof of stake that's networks? Do you see them as uh, part of the state. future? Proof Tron of state is and others? Ah, let's stop there then. It's terrible. Because a lot of people see that as the future of um, yeah, scalable that's crypto. They're living in. Because proof of stake is the same old world we live in today where mm. a few people control everything. Mm, yeah. Yeah, and, and it, it, all the proof, so of, most, a, a number of the proof of stake things that, I, I've got loads of proof of stakes, right? And I've, I've you know, I might as well throw the money in the river. Um, and when you look at, at Which proof- Which ones are you in? Oh, I can't even remember. It, the, 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 EOS? The, the problem with proof of stake is that few people control the system. 21 block producers or whatever it is. Those kind of things. Yeah. And, you know, we're, hello world, we're back to where we started from. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the... Oh, this is Vitalik Buterin, the man who invented... Yeah, I mean, I think he'll kill... Ethereum, th he says this is the problem, but 
I think he'll kill it. Ethereum in the same direction. I think he'll, I think he'll kill it by doing that. No, he will. But I think they'll kill it. They'll kill Ethereum by doing that. No. Oh, they'll kill the network. They'll kill Ethereum. Yeah. They'll, it will be one of those things that was great at the time, and then they went proof of stake and they died. Direction, no, he will, but I think they'll kill it. They'll kill they'll the work how to do it. No, we'll, oh, they'll kill the network. They'll, they'll, It'll be a they'll disaster. They'll kill Ethereum, yeah. They'll, it will be one of those things that was great at the time, and then they went proof Which of stake. by inverse will increase the value of Bitcoin. If, if it's going to be the lone proof of stake and the biggest network, it's uh, Ethereum the whole... Ethereum boosts boost the value of BTC um, because everything goes through BTC. It needs to circulate. Yeah. So... Um, no, so something else will replace it. But proof of stake, fundamentally, the problem is mm. humans, and yeah. it will be. They always end up controlled by a few humans, normally Mr. 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 X, or and his and his mates. Do you see side chains or um, something built on top of Bitcoin to solve the uh, it, it's, scaling problem? Well, the I, Lightning Network, for example, it's been much talked about. It is gaining some traction, but it's still you know small beer. But is that if, a way forward? If if it costs too much to do the proof of work, then the hash rate drops because people can't earn enough Bitcoin to make it work. So the hash rate, as it has already dropped off, right? And it will go back up again. It's only the economic relevance of the activity that defines how much hash goes into mining the coin. If it doesn't make sense to do it, people don't do it. Now, if I can go and I can run my um, Canadian marijuana growing plant with my, inside a mountain with my Bitcoin miners providing the heat, and I can make money on my weed, and I can make money on my Bitcoin, then I'm going to, the hash rate is going to go up, so to speak. So to speak. Right, yeah. But, but it's only the economics of it that make it work. So if the economics don't work because it's more expensive to do Bitcoin than it is to do a bank, or to do, it's more expensive to do Bitcoin than to do a social media validation token, or it's more um, expensive to do blockchain than it is to transfer money to buy advertising around the world, then Bitcoin won't be used. And then it's not used and people can't make money doing it and the price of Bitcoin falls and the miners um, retire and then the miners that stay make just enough to get by. Right? That's how that system works. So it self-moderates itself to what is economically viable. If it's cheaper to use um, Bitcoin with all the POW energy being used than it is to do it with 22,000 people in, tw oh, sorry, 3 million people in 22,000 offices, then it'll be done on the blockchain and they'll go away. If it's cheaper to do it there, then on the blockchain, the blockchain goes away. So you don't have to worry about it. It's what is cheaper. And at the end of the day, as Karl Marx would have told you, there's only energy and mud. Right? The mud's free. It's the energy that costs. Everything else is just energy. All costs are energy stacked on top of each other. Work, our labour, plus energy. Right? So it's all down to how much energy you use. How much energy is used by banks, how much energy is used by the blockchain doing what the banks would be doing. If you use less energy there, they get the game. If they do less energy there, they get the game. If this guy lets off less CO2 than that guy, that guy wins the game. Okay. Um, do Think you about see, CO2 do you, released by three million people and their cars. Yeah, sure. Do Except you see uh, post-blockchain technology as being useful? This, I, I'm saying, I don't but, even know what that called? is. Something called directed acyclic graph well, technology, DAG. Yeah. Um, it's and there's one or two coins that are based on that, which crypto, is right? um, it's Tangle kind of based, which is IOTA's yeah. technology. I think it's based crypto. on that technology. Blockchain is Hollow a Chain is another one, I think, which is, doesn't use DAG, but uses something else, which is not quite blockchain, but it's kind of a mega sharding system. If you take crypto out of the blockchain, you have a database. Yeah, and databases are great, and in the future everything's on databases, as we see. You know, Google's a database, yeah, but it, it hasn't got the crypto element which enables everybody to be running Google, right? It's the distributed nature of it. The vast amount, well, up to recently anyway, you think all those people with computers on that are not doing anything with them? How much computing power that is? And we all know computing power generates value, right? So it's just a way to get at that vast computing power to generate value. If someone came up with a better way of generating value by a dis dis distributed form of computing, that would do very, very well. And if it, if it made more financial sense than crypto, it would kill crypto dead, but, or, or rather blockchain dead. But crypto is the element that enables you to give it over to everybody. It's the security layer that keeps it, it able to be distributed around the sum total of, of humanity. The point is, it's actually one GPU, one vote. And that's the interesting thought behind it. And 
this is going towards AI because you're going to be, AI is much bigger problem than crypto is because AI really will boil the oceans because if I've got one more GPU than you, I'm going to beat you. Right, so you're going to have to get two more GPUs, and I'm going to have to get three, and then you're going to have to get five, and I'm going to have to get nine, and my company's going to have to get a thousand, and your company's going to have to get a thousand and two, and our country's going to have to get ten million. Which brings me to um, yeah, um, um, China and the US, the tech cold war. I think the Wall Street Journal's calling it I, today. I, 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 it's not wrong with a with a cold war. There's normally uh, wars are, are really creative things apart from they kill loads of people. So mm. you can have one where people don't die. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. It's called competition over technology, yeah. essentially. Yeah. 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 I, so I, do, you, do you see Asia? Uh, I get the feeling that they're ahead of the game on crypto. Is well, that they're ahead of a fair point? And in case of China, where the state has control from the top down, as it were, they can put in place regulations oh, and bash heads together and things think, moving quickly. I don't think politicians um, are the determining feature. Um, your population is one. Um, and they do have a lot of people there. Um, and they have a good position in AI. And um, Bitmain is, was, is, maybe still is, going towards AI, right? And obviously, America's got great footprint for AI. They've got AMD. They've got um, NVIDIA, which is the core um, hardware for this stuff. They've got you know, a intelligence nomenclature of a vast scale, which is obviously working very hard on being able to you know, know what you're going to do tomorrow um, for using AI, etc. And they've got people like, like um, Tesla running people over with their cars and stuff. So there's a massive AI um, footprint in America. And there's probably a potential for a massive AI footprint in China, but I think they're going to have a hard time keeping up with the way that the Americans do this stuff. But at the end of the day, AI is a weapon. And you're looking into the future, some distance, but uh, where is the market headed now? We look for just made a big breakout. Can that be sustained? And this is, is this the end the of the I'm bull market, of the bear market? I believe it is the end of crypto winter. Now, the only thing that needs to be maintained is my ability to get my calls on video, right? Because I don't want to be pulled up tomorrow and told you were totally wrong. And I, this may be totally wrong. I've got to say, I, I, I don't dictate the future. But I think the following is going to transpire. I think we're going to go to 6,000 really quickly. And then we could get a wobble. Maybe not. But 6,000 is a high probability in the near term. It literally could happen tomorrow. It could happen in three weeks. It's going to, I believe, happen quite soon. Then it's whether it goes to 10. And I think that's quite likely. I, I'm expecting, oh, no, it's, it, won't, it won't take that long. Because, you know, there are just a vast number of people that were around two Wait years ago. Yeah, and, and they're, they're, they're in it. They care. And, and they're waiting for that moment to happen. So whether it's short or long, it always seems to me it's going to happen faster than it does. But I think there's a good possibility of 10,000 in the not too distant future. Then the question is going to be 100,000 or back down to not much. right? Because what could happen, yeah. I don't believe it will happen, mm -hmm. but if you looked at, say, oil in the 70s and all the commodity markets in the 70s, they did that classic crash and then they fell down back to normality again. And then they went along did, and then they repeated it, but less. And then they repeated less, and then it was like aftershocks. This could be, it's not impossible that this would be an aftershock rally. I don't think it is, because I believe in the long term. That's the, the only call people need to make. Is this a long term thing, or is this just a blip? I don't think it's a blip, I think it's a long term thing. So I don't think it's going to be an aftershock, and I think we're on the way in a couple of years, three, four maybe, back up to levels probably above the previous high. high right? Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to. I think Bitcoin will be a hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars a coin at some point before I'm dead, okay? Because it will um, be an equivalent to gold, and that puts it at about a quarter of a million dollars ahead. And there, and there is a fixed um, issuance on it, and it is the brand. So in a long term future, well, the price code, so that could change. What's that? Although, as you said earlier, it's code. It's and code. That can, that it could, could change. change. It will be very very difficult under the way that mm -hmm. things run now. now. But it still won't change the dynamic of the way that crypto will be going. And I think Bitcoin will remain at the top of the pyramid of value for crypto. So if you think it's a long-term thing, it's like, don't sweat it, just keep buying little bits, which is what I've been doing for over a year. I've just been buying a, a bit and a bit and a bit. And so now I'm back to where I was when I sold 18,000, mm -hmm. which is not a bad place to be when it's five. But I will still continue to just to take little chunks of it. Every, actually, I, I buy a bit every three days.
because I can't resist. But just a little bit, just a little bit. Have you got any portfolio that. advice for um, people for looking at crypto? If you, if you were starting, I would stick to the um, top 20 coins and I would probably only play with the ones that are mineable, M top 20 mineable coins. And then if I was utter novice, just, just start to acquire Bitcoin, play, open up um, exchange accounts and play with you know, five, 10 pounds worth because it's the same experience, but just less terrifying than doing it at, with 10,000 pounds worth, right? And you skill up, you, it's a skill game, right? So you need plenty of practice and you play with matches rather than with, with money that you count. And as you get more and more comfortable with it, as you learn the ropes, then you can afford to grow your situation. Um, if you are a, a practice speculator, then I would go searching for tiny coins that have got big futures because they've got good teams behind them. A good example, midway up for, for that, is um, Raven. Raven's an interesting coin. What does Raven do? What's that? Well, it, I mean, it, I, I, I think of it, they've got all sorts of plans. Okay. okay. It's more about how they've, when they started and how they progressed. Their progression and their team, the group behind them, is, is impressive and real. Yeah. In the same way as doggy coin is is a, another good coin for exactly the opposite reason. It's got a fan, fantastic brand. It's got massive profile, and it's still relatively cheap. In fact, I wrote an article about doggy coin for Forbes last year, and this week I think um, Elon Musk has come That's out right, yeah. saying, "Yay, doggy coin!" And I totally agree. It, it's a cool coin, but this is down at the the dangerous end, where the multiples are. Now, if you go down even further to the little coins and you do your research and you find coins with a good group of developers behind them that are committed and they've got good plans, again, there's a lot of money to be made. But the way you do it is that you would say, I like that coin, I'll have 50 pounds worth of it. And in three years time, you could come back and it could be a thousand pounds, right? Don't go, oh, I'll put 10,000 pounds in that. Yeah, you could be a millionaire in three years time, but life doesn't tend to pan out like that. No. It's, it's like the bigger the risk gets, the smaller the bets you make. And then you will make a really, really great return because the skill that you will apply, which you need to build up, will give you that alpha. And the alpha is, is potential is great in crypto because the market is so unsophisticated, right? And it's that lack of sophistication that gives you huge alpha opportunities. Whereas in equities, you're competing, it's like playing tennis against Lendl, right? You're gonna, they're gonna kill you, right? Or Federer, it's like, I'm gonna play tennis for money uh, against Federer. Yeah, your odds aren't great. Right? And equities is like that because it's crawled all over by geniuses. Whereas crypto is still mainly um, populated by people that are not financially sophisticated. And therefore, that you've, you've got great opportunities. There's much more room to value add through skill. Right? So that is, the, the key things for me is skill up. For goodness sake, skill up. Don't take risks with large sums. Right? Take big risks with tiny sums. Yeah, and practice taking gigantic risks with tiny sums. Five pounds, you can do that in crypto. You can go onto an exchange and you can buy five pounds of all sorts of crazy stuff, right? Well, you get, it's, it's, it's two pulls on a fruit machine. I don't know, I haven't pulled a hand on a fruit machine or pressed a button in a long time, <laughs> a but you, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's a mug's game, but nobody, nobody's gonna cry about losing five pounds in a fruit machine, yeah. right? But the skill that you can earn by doing that over a year, for example, could put you in a beautiful position in a couple of years' time when things are getting very funky. Um, but if you just pile in, you'll just, like in all markets, pile into a market, you will lose your shirt. Go in gently, and there's no market I know that you can go in so gently. If you want to um, buy a sugar contract in commodities, you've got to punt 5,000 pounds. If you want to buy an equity, really, um, and not get hit by all the costs, you've got to punt 1,500. If you want to trade a um, Bitcoin, on, on any exchange at all, really, you could do it a pound, just one pound. You could be trading all day for one pound and the cost was 0 0.025 of a penny. But you know, m most people suffer when they get into markets because they've got no practice at the beginning and they have to go in so large in comparison with their own money, it's just too scary. You could spend three years trading all day long on a hundred pounds probably, yeah? And at the end of a period of, of time, you'd be quite skilled. Right? And that put you at an advantage. And what you always need in any market is an advantage or an ETF. Buy an ETF, well, they won't let you with Bitcoin, but they will one day buy an ETF and forget about it. Or skill up, read all the books, mine in particular, very good book, and 
play with it with very, very small amounts, which you can. There's no other market like it where you can play with such small amounts. And that will give you the, the trading muscles and the skill and the insight into crypto that you need, if you want it, to then go forward and start to get a little less playful with it and start to get more serious. Because there is very, very serious money to be made in crypto, but not for the uninitiated. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time, Clem. That was Clem Chambers from Online Blockchain. He's also the Chief Executive of ADVFN, the Global Private Investors Network. Thank you very much for watching.